Good morning, everybody. So thank you so much for coming, and thank you to everyone who's online. Um, so I'm going to shift gears a little bit away from immune therapy and start talking about what we call BRAF inhibitors, or this is what we also refer to as targeted therapy, and many of you may have heard of this. Um, so I'm going to say BRAF, what does it mean, and what are some of the complications that we can have with BRAF inhibitors? So I have no disclosures for this talk. Um, so first, I'm just going to talk about, well, what is a BRAF mutation and what does it mean? Then I'm going to talk about what that, what that does for some of the treatment options. And then lastly, what are some of the side effects that, that can be expected when somebody goes on a BRAF inhibitor? So first of all, so BRAF is essentially, it's a gene that helps provide instructions for making a protein that helps send signals from the outside of the cell to the inside of the cell, so the cell nucleus. So basically, it's a gene that's there. But in cancer cells, specifically in some melanoma cells, this cancer is mutated or changed. So there's an abnormality within that actual gene. And when that's a cancer cell, we refer to that as a BRAF mutation. Now, you may also uh, hear us refer to people who have BRAF wild type or BRAF non-mutated. That means the gene is acting normally, so you don't have a mutation. So this is just kind of a, a diagram which explains a little bit about what the gene does. So if you think about this here on the left, so this is a normal cell. So essentially this cell is kind of a circle here. You have a signal that comes from the outside. It kind of gets transmitted into the cell, and here you have this BRAF. Normally it helps send signals down to the nucleus. A lot of those signals help control cell growth. And when it's normal, you have kind of the normal to be expected cell growth. But then, when you look at a BRAF mutation positive melanoma cell, what happens is there's a signal that comes down, but this BRAF is abnormal. So what that often means is that some abnormal signals get sent to the center of the cell, and then you often have an increase in the cancer cell growth, which is what you don't want to have. You don't want to have these abnormal cells growing um, uncontrollably. So. A BRAF mutation is often present in about 40 to 50 percent of people who have a cutaneous or a skin melanoma. Now, people who have other types of melanoma, say like a uveal melanoma that occur in the back of the eye, or a sinus melanoma or mucosal melanoma, those much less commonly have mutations in BRAF. But of the people who have a skin melanoma, about 40 to 50 percent of them will have a mutation in BRAF. Now, it also often occurs in what we call non-chronically sun-damaged skin. So it tends to be kind of younger people who have this who haven't had a lifetime of sun exposure. But again, there are always exceptions. So how do we do the testing to find out if you have a BRAF mutation? So we actually do this on the melanoma itself. So it's usually performed on the biopsy or the surgical specimen. So usually as a routine, if you have lymph nodes that are involved in the melanoma after, you know, Dr. Delman or Dr. Lowe or Dr. Russell or Dr. Rizzo takes those lymph nodes out, they'll go to a laboratory. In the laboratory, they'll basically tell you that, okay, this is melanoma, how many lymph nodes are involved. The pathologist will kind of take a piece of the melanoma and analyze it to basically find the genetic sequencing to find out if you have the BRAF mutation or not. Now, that testing can often take a few weeks. So it's often common that people will come into the office and see us, and we're talking about different options for treatment, but we may not have these testing results back yet. So we'll often kind of mention to you that, well, there's this possibility of a BRAF mutation, but we often don't have the results on that kind of first visit. Now, the majority of um, BRAF tests are basically, they're positive for a mutation that's something called V600E. So over 90% of the mutations have this. Now we treat essentially most of the BRAF mutations similarly, but a lot of times when people look at their pathology reports, they'll see, oh, I have a V600E mutation. Essentially what that means is that within the mutation, there's a, whoops, there's a substitution of glutamic acid for valine. Um, that's the most common, but there are also other types of mutations. So we have a V600K, R, E2, and D mutations are also known, 
And there are actually some even ones that are less common than these. Um, so the important thing to kind of always remember about BRAF is that it's a mutation within the cancer cell itself. So this is really important because a lot of times people will come in and they'll say, oh, I have a mutation. What does that mean for my children? But it's actually a mutation within the cancer cell itself. So it's not something that you're going to pass on to your children. So you don't have to worry about that. Um, so why do we test for BRAF? Well, the big thing is if we find a mutation, then we can actually do something about it, and that may actually affect some of your treatment choices. So if you have that BRAF mutation, you're likely eligible to take medications that actually inhibit that abnormal BRAF. And that's important because a lot of those newer medications have actually been shown to help people live longer, and, and that's something important. Um, this is often what we refer to as targeted therapy. So targeted therapy is kind of a, a big buzzword in you know, melanoma nowadays and also just cancer. And basically what it is is it's kind of taking the cancer cell and changes in the cancer cell that are unique to you and basically changing the therapy that we might give. So this is just another diagram of kind of what happens. So this is essentially, if you think about it, like this would be the cell here. This is the cell surface. There's a signal that comes down to the cell. And then here is this BRAF. Well, right underneath it is something else called MEK. So the drugs that we give, actually, they inhibit this area right here and this area right here. The reason that most of the drugs we do now are a combination of a BRAF inhibitor and a MEK inhibitor is because we've actually found that it works better to inhibit kind of those two steps rather than just one at all. So vemurafenib, which I'll talk about in a little bit, was actually the first medication for BRAF inhibition. It was approved back in 2011, so the same year that ethalumumab got approved. But over the years, we found that, well, if you combine the BRAF and the MEK inhibitor, that's actually better. So that's kind of the standard of care. And if any of you have ever been talking about with your physician these medications, we'll always talk about doing the two medications at the same time. So there are a couple different combinations that we use for um, inhibiting BRAF. So the first is vemurafenib. The trade name is Zelberaf. And the other one is cobimetinib or catelic. So the vemurafenib here, this is the BRAF inhibitor, and this is the MEK inhibitor. Um, the other one is dibrafenib or taflinar, and trametinib or mechanist. Um, there, these two are currently approved by the FDA, and you may hear about us talk, talk to you about them in clinic. Um, both of them are good. There may be some reasons that we choose one combination versus another. They're just made by different companies, and they were approved at slightly different times. Um, some of the side effects are a little bit different, but mainly the same between the different groups. Um, there are slight differences in how you take the medication, whether it needs to be refrigerated or not. Um, but we think of them kind of very, very equivalently. Um, I mentioned this third category, encorafenib and binimetinib, um, because this is kind of a newer generation of BRAF inhibitor and MEK inhibitor. It's still currently in cl clinical trials, but it may be something that can be offered in the clinic in the, in the short time in the future. So how do I take these medications? Well, some patients absolutely love this, but they're oral pills. So you basically, you don't have to come into the infusion center and get an infusion. Now, you still have to come see us every few weeks, and we have to come see you and see how you're doing and check your labs and all those things. But they are oral pills, which sometimes some patients really, really like. Um, depending on whether it's the BRAF inhibitor or the MEK inhibitor, you take them either once or twice a day. Um, some of the medications may need refrigeration. So that's important to consider if you're you know, kind of out and about or traveling. So the benefits of BRAF and MEK inhibition is that it usually works very quickly. So essentially, if they're effective, they're shutting down kind of that abnormal portion of the cell, and that stops the cell from growing very quickly. So a lot of times, people can see responses very quickly, sometimes days to weeks. The other benefit is that there's a very high response rate to these medications. So with immunotherapy, sometimes it can take a while to find out if the immunotherapy is helping. 
But with these medications, they often work quickly, and there's the majority of people who take them often get a benefit from taking them. Um, the other benefit is that, that it is oral. So again, some people really like that they're able to take an oral medication, and they don't have to come here for an infusion. But some considerations to kind of take into account are, well, what are the side effects with these medications? And I'm going to go into a little bit of detail about what that can be. Um, the other thing is resistance. So for a lot of these medications, when they're working, they work very well. But eventually, sometimes the cancer cell can figure a way kind of around these medications. And so you essentially, at some point, may become resistant to the medications, and they may no longer work. Now, there's no test that we have that can say when that will happen, if that's years from now, if that's months from now, but that is something that can happen with these medications. Um, the other thing is, which was also a benefit, is the fact that it's oral. So if you don't take the medications, or if you're one of those people who tends to forget to take your medications, it's not going to work. So you have to just kind of remember to take it, um, essentially. Um, so side effects. So some of those side effects that we notice are with the skin. So people can develop lots of different rashes. Um, they can also be more sensitive to the sun when they take these medications. So we often advise people to you know, follow the normal sun protection measures. Um, when we used to do the single agent BRAF medications, there was an increased risk of squamous cell carcinomas. So that's still on the label of a lot of these packages although that rate is significantly lower when we combine the BRAF drug along with the MEC drug. Um, other side effects that can happen, some patients will get diarrhea. Usually this is something that for most patients, if they get it, it's mild. It can be controlled with things like Imodium. Um, fatigue is also a common complaint that people will have. Again, there's a wide range. Sometimes people say it's mild fatigue. Sometimes it can kind of be more severe. But the treatment for that really kind of depends on the severity of it. Um, the other thing that can sometimes really affect patients is arthralgias. So these are kind of like painful joints. People feel like they have arthritis. Um, and sometimes this can be very, very bothersome to patients, and it's even a reason sometimes we stop the medications in some patients. We usually treat it first, usually with over-the-counter anti-inflammatories. That can often help for a lot of patients. Um, the next thing is fevers. Um, so these fevers can often occur on these medications. It's usually not a subtle fever. So when I say fever, I mean like 101, 102, 103, sometimes even higher. So when um, we encourage all patients that when they take these medications, we want them to call us if they have a fever. Now, the first time that you experience a fever, we may say, OK, come to clinic. And we may evaluate you to make sure you don't have other, some sort of other infection. If we're convinced that this is probably just the drug medication, we'll advise you to stop the medication. And usually stopping it for one to two days will actually help the fevers resolve. Once the fevers have resolved, we actually have you restart the medication. And for most patients, that successfully treats the fever. Now, patients who get the fevers tend to have them come back. So some people get cyclical patterns that every few weeks they'll develop a fever, and they kind of know the routine that they'll stop the medication. Um, some patients, just stopping the medicine doesn't seem to help with the fevers. So we actually sometimes start a low dose of prednisone, usually about 10 milligrams, which is a low dose of a steroid. And that often helps most patients. Um, other things, so sometimes these medications can cause different abnormalities in your liver. This is nothing that you'd necessarily feel. Um, but when you're coming in and we're checking your blood work, this is something that we would pick up. Um, other things that it's been associated with are rare, but it can cause some abnormalities in the way the heart pumps. So something called an ejection fraction, which is basically a measure of kind of how the heart muscle is pumping. Um, some of the early studies found that with these medications and some people, that can actually decrease. Um, there are also some eye changes that have been reported, although that's, that's less common. It's usually about 1 to 2 percent of people who take the medication. Um, so just to kind of summarize, so BRAF is a gene which is mutated in some melanomas. Um, in melanoma, this is kind of what we refer to as one of the targeted therapy options. 
Um, and the side effects are kind of important. I just went through a couple of the, the more serious and the more common side effects. Um, but that's important to kind of consider when people are thinking about this as a treatment option. Um, I'm happy to answer any questions or leave them for later. I think uh, we have the break next, so it might be everybody wants to take a break, but I'm happy to, you know, have you come up here and answer any questions that you have. <laughs>